what's going on guys today I'm gonna to get my first hands-on with and of course show you guys an unboxing of some Haswell hardware components the first component I have right here this is an Intel Core i3 4330 from Intel socket 1150 Haswell do not underestimate the Core i3 because this is a very powerful chip for what it is and for how much it costs but of course I'll get a little bit more into that in a second and now I'm also gonna be unboxing a motherboard today this is the Z87 MX D3H once again socket 1150 Haswell uh, you cannot use Ivy Bridge uh, processors on a Haswell motherboard and vice versa. Uh, that is a totally new socket so some people may like that, some people may hate that, but we're, it's just what it is. But I'm just going to stop rambling here because I know you guys just want to see this hardware and frankly so do I. So let's go ahead and get started with the unboxing. So here we have a closer look at the components we're going to be getting our hands on in just one second. But before I do that, I'd like to hit the rewind button for just one second and focus um, really briefly on Intel's previous generation processors. Here we have some Ivy Bridge chips. We have a Core i3-3225, Core i5-3570K, and a Core i7-3770K. Now, really quick, I just want to demonstrate, you know, these are all uh, socket 1155. That's just what Sandy Bridge and Ivy Bridge was. Uh, you know, Intel's TikTok, TikTok, that whole cycle. Uh, one of them is a whole new micro architecture while the other one is an actual die shrink. So Sandy Bridge to Ivy Bridge was just shrinking down the manufacturing process from 32 to 22 nanometers. And now this time around, it's a whole new microarchitecture, which brings the new socket. So that's really quick, you know, I just wanted to get that out of the way here. But for this video, I guess a good comparison is going to be, obviously, the Core i3-3225. So like I said, with the new uh, microarchitecture, Intel is really focusing on power efficiency. And to demonstrate that, for example, this guy right here, this uh, Core i3-3225 from the Ivy Bridge generation, this is clocked at a frequency of 3.3 gigahertz. And out of the wall, you know, without any modifications to the, the base clock or anything like that, uh, this guy pulls 55 watts from the wall. Now this guy, the 4330 from, you know, the Haswell generation, this is clocked at 3.5 gigahertz, and this pulls only 54 watts from the wall. So Intel, like I said, is focusing on power efficiency. You get the, the, the same performance, if not, in this case, greater performance, while consuming less power. Now for desktops, that's not as big of a deal as it is with mobile devices. So if you have a Haswell chip in your laptop, which, you know, all the new MacBooks are starting to have, and even all, like, all the PCs have, I think there's even some tablets now that are having Haswell chips in them, that's really going to improve battery life, but not affect performance. But with that said, you know, having a desktop consume less power also is not a bad thing at all. And while there's a lot of little differences between this processor and this processor, really the only other big one, at least, you know, for general purposes, and especially for the Hackintosh world, is that the difference in the integrated GPU. This guy packs the Intel HD 4000, whereas here we have the Intel 4600. There's also a 4400 variant, but from what I've researched, and I haven't done a lot of research on it, but I've done a little bit, the 46 is just better supported than OS X. Don't quote me on that, that could change, or it might have already changed, or maybe that's just not true. But I'm definitely going to get my hands on it, and uh, of course let you guys know the differences between the two. So like I said, you know, if you already have a motherboard that's on the 1155 socket, there's really no need to sell it and go with Haswell, because you know, there's going to be some advantages of going with this chip here. But bear in mind that these are going to be both very good performing chips. I believe on Geekbench, uh, I tested this and I got an average of about 8,000 or so. Now this being 0.2 gigahertz faster, and of course, you know, that's really nice that it's consuming less power. But I also uh, expect that with that increase in the frequency, we're probably going to see anywhere from, you know, two to 500 points increase on Geekbench as well. And so for everyday usage, that really doesn't mean much. But if you want to, you know, say, export some videos or something on this processor, which I wouldn't particularly recommend, but that doesn't mean you can't do it then that 0.2 gigahertz over time, you know, if you're exporting 10 minute high definition videos, that can make a very big difference on your export times. So without rambling anymore, I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, unbox this for you guys. So I have my knife here, being very careful not to cut myself. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna demolish that little factory seal there, just like that. Put the knife off to the side. Don't play with knives, kids. I'm gonna go ahead and take this guy out of the box. This box did not like me at all. So in the box here, uh, really quick, I'll bore you guys with the uh, user manual. Of course, you get the little i3 sticker on the back. It's weird that this isn't landscape anymore. It's like um, portrait. So you know, interesting little tidbit there. But uh, pulling the actual processor out, here we go. See if that we can uh, focus that a little bit better for you guys. There we go, 3.5 gigahertz. Uh, you know, if you really, really are dedicated and you want to count all 1,150 pins by all means, that's up to you. Go ahead and pause the video back there. Uh, of course, here we also get the Intel stock cooler. I do believe this is a like a, a tiny bit smaller, 
than the uh, Ivy Bridge or the Sandy Bridge cooler. I could be wrong on that, but uh, it looks pretty much the same size. I mean, this is an Intel cooler. I mean, <laughs> if you guys have seen one, you've seen them all, even if it is a little bit smaller, which at this point, actually, I'm not quite sure if it is, but I don't think it really matters because most people won't be using this anyway, even if it is just a little Core i3. Some people will, and you know, personally, I will just because it's a little uh, test bench I have on my desk. But uh, if you do plan on you know, doing some video editing or something on this little i3, then you'll definitely want to invest in an aftermarket cooler anyway. But so this is exactly why I didn't do just the processor in its own video because this is pretty much all there is to this. So let's go ahead and dive into the motherboard. As I'm sure all you guys know by now, I love Gigabyte motherboards. I have worked with a couple ASUS boards in the past and those are all fine and dandy as well. But uh, for, you know, typically for the price and what you get, I absolutely recommend Gigabyte boards, especially if you're gonna be going the Hackintosh route. Uh, I've really had very few problems when it comes to Gigabyte motherboards. So uh, really quick to show you guys around the box here, ultra durable five. That's one thing I love about Gigabyte boards. Uh, they're very durable. Uh, the PCBs are often you know, multi-layered and uh, there's, uh, there's a little bit more on the back I'll get into, but the PCBs are just very high quality. I absolutely love them. Uh, ultra cool, all new heatsink design, so that's very interesting. We'll have to little, uh, see more about that. Ultra performance, ultra safe, uh, blah, 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 ultra USB 3 plus, six USB 3.0 ports with uh, three times USB power. So that means you could probably uh, you know, charge like a, something like an iPad that requires you know two amps from uh, from the I.O. to charge. So that's good. Uh, a lot of devices are demanding more and more power nowadays. Uh, having a look at some of the features on the back here, go ahead and scan that QR code. I have no idea where that's going to take you. So uh, if you feel like being adventurous, go ahead and uh, bust out your favorite scanning app on your smartphone. Uh, so right here, uh, just a very brief overview of the motherboard itself. Go ahead and try to get this a little bit closer. Fourth generation Intel processors, once again, Sandy Bridge, Ivy Bridge, or anything before that will not work. Socket 1150, this rocks the Z87 chipset, which is very similar to the Z77 chipset. It has a few more of those Haswell optimizations. Uh, memory type, uh, oh, I, I skipped graphics. Uh, it has one PCIe 3.0 by 16 slot, one PCIe 3.0 by 8 slot, uh, and then if you have one card, it uses 16, or if you have two cards, it uses eight. So that's pretty common. Uh, displays, you have HDMI out, DVI out, DSUB, and DisplayPort. Memory type, two channel DDR3. The memory DIMM, you have four, four uh, slots of DDR3. The expansion slots, you know, I'm not gonna read all this stuff, but uh, you guys get the idea. Very common gigabyte features. Uh, really, I guess this day, very common features across pretty much any brand. Uh, there's just a quick look at the rear I.O. there. I'll get a little bit more into that in a second. And uh, what right here, uh, that's some of that PCB stuff I was talking about. Uh, humidity protection, glass fabric PCB, so it's kind of like interwoven. So very cool stuff. I, once again, I just love uh, the quality of Gigabyte motherboards. So without rambling too much more, let's go ahead and crack open the box. And uh, in here, looks like right on top, we have a uh, two-way SLI bridge. Here we have the, the rear I.O. panel which uh, I'm just going to be putting this on my test bench on my desk so I will not be using this, but good to have it. Gigabyte has included four SATA cables, count them, four, two, four. We have some awesome user manuals and I'm assuming a DVD or a CD of some kind for some drivers and whatnot. And of course, the motherboard itself. Now touching the metal posts on my desk is, you know, trying to, to uh, get any static electricity out of here, I'm trying my best here. Uh, here's the actual board. I love the color scheme of this board. I myself, I've just always been attracted to like darker colors. And I uh, know that's not a racist statement, but um, I really love here the blue and the gray and the black. That to me just looks absolutely awesome. I think all boards should look like this. Of course, this has the micro ATX uh, form factor. So, you know, not a full size ATX, not a mini ITX. Uh, this is a pretty good size. Uh, you can fit two GPUs on here. We'll get a little bit more into that in a second. But front and center, here we have the CPU socket. Once again, LGA 1150, not compatible with Ivy Bridge and Sandy Bridge. I promise I won't say that again. Uh, here we have those memory slots. This board does support up to 32 gigabytes of memory. So that's pretty much carried over from uh, Ivy Bridge and Sandy Bridge. Both those boards on this plot, on like the previous 1155, Z77 or Z68, that all supported 32 gigabytes as well. Uh, I guess we'll, now we'll get down into these uh, PCI lanes. Here we have that by 16 slot, a by 8 slot, and a by 4 slot. So now if you were to run uh, like a GPU here and a GPU here, that's when you get 8 and 8. So that'd be good for like a gaming build, although not, you know, by 16. But if you buy this board, you're probably not an absolutely serious gamer in the first place. But that, believe me, that'll still do you just fine for, you know, all intents and purposes. Uh, up here, this is nice. The, this board 
can be used with overclocking. So you can get like a, a Core i7 and you know plug both those power draws in and get to that you know 4 4.5 gigahertz because you do have that extra power being supplied to the processor. Not all chipsets support that, but the Z87 does. So rock on gigabyte. Now I guess we'll focus up here. This is some nice cooling. Uh, once again, I love the color scheme, so uh, that's going to cool down all those little transistors and whatnot in there. Uh, moving up here, uh, we have two fans. We have actually we have four fans total, all of which are four pin headers. So that's going to be really nice that you know you can uh, change dynamically change your uh, pr your fan RPMs when the processor is hotter or colder. That's very nice. A lot of boards only have like one four pin and like two or three three pins, which doesn't have that uh, regulation. But uh, this, you know, being four four ports will really help get some cool airflow going. Uh, here we have your 24 pin main ATX power connector. We have a USB 3.0 header down here. Moving down here, we have six SATA 3 ports. Now this is another advantage of the Z87 platform, whereas previously we could only have, I believe, up to four, or it was either two or four, I, I'm kind of drawing a blank now. But now we actually have the ability to have all six of these be SATA 3, so that's very nice there. This board also facts the uh, Gigabyte's famous dual UEFI BIOS. So if one of these BIOS gets corrupted from you know a bad flash or something, you can always boot into the other flash and be all set. Now here you have all your connectors for you know your hard drive LED, your power switch, your power LED, things like that. Uh, here we have count them one, two, three USB 2.0 headers. So that's nice. You have three USB 2.0 headers, one USB 3.0 header. Uh, down here you have your TPM, LPT. Uh, honestly, I'm not even quite sure what LPT is. TPM, I believe, is useful for like overclocking and things like that. Uh, here you have your audio. If I'm not mistaken, this board has the ALC892 audio chipset, which is very OS 10 friendly. Uh, actually, there's a fifth fan header. I kind of missed this one before. Once again, a four pin. So you have five four pin fa uh, fan headers. So that's very nice. And now I guess uh, the last thing to show you guys here is the rear I.O. We have the classic PS2 port, which I don't think is going to be going away anytime soon. From what I've read in YouTube comments, a lot of gamers use PS2 keyboards. I mean, I'm not a gamer, I wouldn't know, but I haven't used the PS2 port since like 2006. So me personally, I'll never use this, especially in OS X, because I don't think this will even work in OS X. Uh, here we have two USB 2.0 ports. We have VGA out, DVI out, Display Port out, and HDMI. We have our optical audio. We have four USB 3.0 headers, which is always awesome. Here we have a, I believe an Intel chipset uh, Ethernet port. So that's Gigabit Ethernet with the Intel chip, which is absolutely awesome. And uh, down here we have our traditional audio outputs. So there's my overview of the Gigabyte Z87 MX D3H. Thank you guys very much for watching. I plan to have tons of content about Haswell. The first thing on my mind is a uh, Haswell versus Ivy Bridge comparison, you know, an everyday performance, things like that. So thank you guys very much for watching. I'm at CPU Kid on Twitter. Also, be sure to check out RoachTechnology.com, and I hope to see you guys back here very soon.